Hey everybody, how you doing? So I wanted to start doing a series of videos on how to speed up your code. Um, a lot of you might not know, but I just started grad school recently and a lot of times we're doing a lot of assignments involving big data and we have to code large matrices and make these operations go kind of fast. So along the way I've been picking up just little tricks for speeding up my code that either I did know before or I didn't know before and it's really cool to learn. Um, and I just wanted to try and pass that knowledge along to you guys. So whenever you're doing your work in computation or at your job or wherever you might be, um, just ways to get a really good speed up out of your code. And these tricks will come from all sorts of places, computer science, math, um, whatever I can think of at the time. So here's one I wanted to start with. Um, I was just doing an assignment last week and it involved some stuff about matrix multiplication as data science projects often do. Um, and I was just getting a terrible, terrible time. It wasn't happening fast at all. I was trying to multiply a n by n matrix. So an n by n matrix by another n by n matrix. So my result was of course an n by n matrix. And in my case, n was kind of large, it was 5,000. And my computer just was taking about 10 minutes to deal with this computation, which wasn't acceptable for the parameters of the problem. But I noticed something about the matrices I was multiplying and that made stuff speed up by a factor of 2,500 in the end. So we're gonna get to that number in the end, but first let's set up what the problem was I was trying to solve. So it was part of a principal component analysis type code. Um, and the crux of the problem boils down to, we had a uh, vector A, which was N dimensional. So A1 through AN. A transpose is of course the same vector, just flattened, so transposed. And A times A transpose, you might remember this from our uh, video of A, A transpose versus A transpose A. This is the outer product, so this is not an inner product, which means it doesn't result in a single number. It results in a uh, N by N matrix. And each column looks like the first element, A1, this is a scalar, times A. And then the last element is the scalar AN times the vector A. So that's what this looks like. And we call this matrix A for short. There was a separate matrix B, don't worry too much about what it was, it was just a different n by n matrix. And part of my goal was to multiply, uh, find this product B times A. So here's B, here's A, they're both n by n, and the result should be n by n. So I was thinking about why is it taking so long, and I thought about what's the total number of multiplications that are happening. So for example, if I wanna find this first element of my product matrix, I'm gonna need to do the dot product of the first row of B, with the first column of A, and that's gonna require 5,000 multiplications, if N is 5,000, right? Because it's this element times this element, that's one multiplication, this element times this element, that's another one, and there's 5,000 elements here. So this, uh, computing this element is gonna require N multiplications in general. And how many of these elements do I have to populate? There's N squared elements in here. So in total, there's N cubed, uh, floating point multiplications we have to perform. Now to put that into perspective, if you're going back to my problem where n was 5,000, if you do n cubed, that ends up being 125 billion floating point multiplications. So no, no wonder it was taking so long. Even though computers are very fast at dealing with these floating point multiplications, if you just have so many of them, it's obviously gonna take a while. So in general, uh, I don't know an easy way to get around this problem, but in this specific case, uh, because A was defined as A times A transpose, as this outer product um, of one vector by itself, we can take advantage of this part of the problem to get like a crazy speed up. And I just wanted to show you that process down here. So again, A, A transpose, which is here, is given by this matrix. This matrix is what we call rank one because every single column in this matrix is scalar multiple of the other columns in the matrix. For example, the first column is A1 times this vector A. The last column is AN times this vector A. And every column in between is just some scalar multiple of the vector A, which is what we're gonna use to take advantage um, of the, we're gonna use this to take advantage of the problem, okay? So we have uh, matrix B times matrix A, so A again, I've written in its full form. If we do B times A, we just have to do B times each column of A, and it ends up looking like this. So we have A1 times BA, all the way to AN times BA. Now, what do you notice here? You notice that uh, each column, you only need to find BA, because those are all consistent. This is again a rank one matrix. 
um, except where uh, the multiplied column over and over again is BA instead of just A. And the scalar constants are again A1 all the way to AN. So that means that we can just do this in two steps, right? As our first step, we can say, let's find this BA thing. And how many uh, floating point multiplications is it going to take to find that? Well, uh, B is an n by n matrix, and we're multiplying it by a vector that's n by 1. So each element of the final product is going to require n multiplications, and there's n products, n values in the final product. So it's going to require n squared multiplications. So for the first step, finding this BA is going to require n squared multiplications. So go ahead and pause and verify that for yourself if you need a second. Okay. Um, now the second part, of course, is basically just pasting this BA over and over and over again. And each time we need to multiply it by A1, then by A2, all the way to AN. So how many multiplications is that? So A1, the scalar, times every element of BA. There's 5,000 elements in BA, or N elements in BA. So this is going to require N scalar, uh, N floating point multiplications. And because I have to do that for N columns, this is again N squared multiplications. So we've solved the same problem that we were just trying to solve in the beginning, except now instead of n cubed multiplications, we need two n squared multiplications. So we went from n cubed to two n squared. Is that a lot better? I mean, the power is different. Well, let me put this into perspective for you. If you're back in my problem and your n was uh, 5,000, you, um, let's say you had a problem that was taking 24 hours, right? So if you had a problem that was taking 24 hours and you speed it up by this factor, so this factor here is n over 2, which basically says that if I multiply 2n squared by n over 2, I get back to how long it previously took. So if my problem took 24 hours, for example, and I apply this transformation to it, I can get that problem solved in 30 seconds. All right, so let's take a look at how fast we can make our matrix multiplication if we take advantage of the rank 1 uh, feature that we talked about on the whiteboard. So I'll be using R, the coding language R for this one instead of Python, just because I like how it deals with matrix multiplications. It's a little bit cleaner to read, especially if you're not too familiar with coding matrix multiplications. So uh, here's the setup. We have N is 5,000, as was the case in the project I was working on. We have some matrix uh, B and A. So A is really a vector. It's a N by 1 vector or matrix. B is a N by N matrix and n is 5,000 again. And um, I've just called them, uh, filled them with random numbers, so it doesn't really matter what's in there. So here's solution one. We go ahead and start the timer, and then we do the basic matrix multiplication. No real big deal here. So this operator, if you haven't seen it in R, is a matrix multiplication. So the first thing we do, because it's in parentheses, we do A, matrix multiplied with transpose of A. So this is the outer product, A times A transpose we saw on the whiteboard. Now after that's done, we do B, and then we do the matrix multiplication of B, oops, with that outer product. We get how uh, the end time, and we print out how long it took. So um, I did this a second ago, and I got a time difference of 1.63 minutes. Okay, so let's keep that number in mind. Here's the second solution, taking advantage of the rank 1 nature of this problem. We get the intermediate result, BA, which is just the 5,000 by 5,000 matrix B times the 5,000 by 1 vector A. So this is obviously easier to do than a 5,000 by 5,000 times 5,000 by 5,000 matrix multiplication. Then, since we know that in the result, each column is just some multiple of this BA, like we saw on the whiteboard, we can go ahead and just say that the final result that we want is BA and then this matrix multiplication of transpose of A. I know we didn't show this on the whiteboard explicitly, but you can go ahead and show yourself that um, if you do this operation, this is an outer product again, because it's a 5,000 by one vector multiplied by a one by 5,000 vector. This outer product does exactly the same thing as filling each element of the result, each column of the result by this vector BA times A1, then times A2, then times A3. So it does the exact same thing. We get the end time there and print out how long that took. I did that and it took it took 0.21 seconds. So compare that 1.6 minutes to 0.21 seconds. Let me just do that comparison right here. So 1.6 minutes times 60, so that's how many seconds the first one took. 
divided by the second one took 0.21 seconds. So it's about 450 times faster. Of course, you're saying, wait, I was promised a 2,500 times speed up. Well, in theory it would be, but because of just the computer's overhead, probably for certain um, calculations it's doing, it didn't necessarily get close to that fast, but I don't think anyone's complaining over a 500 times speed up either way. Okay, so still a really powerful method. Last thing I wanted to do was show that uh, these are indeed the same result. So I did the absolute value of the pairwise differences between result two and result one, and I took the mean of them, and I got 1.3 times 10 to the negative 13, which just means that there's a very, very, very small difference between these two results, and it just comes out to how it did the computation. So it's just a computer thing. It's not a math, um, a fundamental difference between these two results. Okay, so that's it. Uh, that's how you can use uh, the fact that you have a rank one matrix in your operations to speed up your code by maybe 450 times if you have 5,000 by 5,000 matrices. All right, until next time.